Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Foxy and this is Foxy Books and Planning. Today is a follow-up video to my Is My TBR Reasonable video that I put out about two weeks ago. Um, I've just finished reading through all of my maybe books and wanted to give you an all, all an update about what books will be staying on my TBR shelf, which books will be just moving back into my collection, and which ones I'm decluttering. Um, before I get into this, if you have not seen the Is My TBR Reasonable video, I suggest you check that out first, as that will give you background to why this, why this discussion is occurring. And with that, let's get right into it. So... Of the books, there were seven books that were on my maybe pile that were basically all YA books that I had bought either on whims, or actually they were all bought on whims, um, because when I read the jacket or the little blurb online, it was a book that was interesting, that sounded interesting to me, but I really had no idea if I was going to vibe with the reading or the writing style or the general pacing of the books. So what I did was I read the first 50 pages of each of these books and made a decision to either just get rid of it entirely, I'm never going to read this, I don't want it to take up space, um, for it to go back on my shelves permanently, or not permanently, go back on my shelves away from my TBR to be read at a later date. It's something that might interest me, but not right now. And then the books were, after reading 50 pages, I'm like, I really want to keep reading. Um, so I'm going to start with the books that I'm going to keep on my TBR shelf. So the first one in that pile is City of Brass by S.A. Um, Charbrotti. Chakra Brody. Apologies again for mutilating that. Um, this was one that I got as one of my free books of the month. I think it was my free book of the month, like the first or second month that I had book of the month. And I knew it was set in the Middle East. It involved Jen and that was it. Um, in the first 50 pages, I really liked the writing style. I really liked the main character whose name is Nahira. I'm a, a Nari. There we go. Nari. And basically, she lives in Cairo during the Napoleonic Wars, because there is reference made to the French invaders, or the French ruling over Cairo. And she works as a witch slash healer. And in the first 50 pages, we get an introduction to her, we get an introduction to Cairo, and she um, performs a ceremony to expel a de demon from a possessed girl. And it ends up summoning a djinn. Um, that's where my 50 pages ends. Um, there's a little bit of explanation about what Nari is in terms of her abilities. Um, and a little bit of introduction to the djinn character. But that's all so far. And it is a fairly hefty book. So 50 pages is less than 10%. And I'm definitely intrigued and definitely want to keep reading. So this one is definitely staggering. Um, the next one is Renegades by Marissa Meyer. This is the first in a trilogy of superhero books. They kind of remind me so it's a cross between x-men and i believe the series is called the good or the boys on amazon or watchmen it kind of reminds me a lot of watchmen and x-men um where we have people who are called prodigies who have superhero like powers and some time ago the super gifted led by a man called Ace Anarchy, who's kind of like our Magneto character, revolt for prodigy freedom to express themselves, to show their gifts. And this book takes place 20? I'm not quite sure about how many years in the future after all of that happened, but we're following our main character, who is Nora. Sorry, I'm very bad with names. 
yeah, uh, Nova, so I was close, um, who is one of these prodigies, but she is part of a villain gang. So she's called a Renet or an anarchist. Um, and there is a ruling council of superheroes called the Renegades, and they recruit other prodigies to be the, the peacekeepers and law people. And basically, I've gotten it through the introduction of all the characters through kind of a what what are the words I'm looking for? Um, an assassination attempt gone wrong, and it introduces us to a majority of our main characters. And there's definitely the start of a Romeo and Juliet kind of thing going on between one of the Renegades and Nova. So I'm going to keep reading. I definitely like Marissa Meyer's writing style. I'm curious because we have another strong outcasty female kind of like Cinder. Um, and it's another twisted version, twisted dystopian kind of thing where you take something that everybody knows and you kind of twist it and put it in a dystopian future. Um, but I'm definitely interested to see where this goes. So this is going to stay on the shelf too. All right, the next book on the stack is The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chokshki? Chokshki? I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. Um, this one is probably, this one and the last one in this category were definitely the ones that held my attention the longest and made me want to keep reading. This is sort of an alternate universe hidden secret society, but it's also set up to be a National Treasure-esque kind of heist movie or heist book where, um, the general idea is that this this is a, a version of our world in the late 1800s where um, the Tower of Babel existed and when it broke apart, the pieces were kind of scattered to the winds and where those pieces landed gave the ability of those around it to forge, which is the magic system in this book. Which is basically you you have certain people have the ability to manipulate one of the three states of matter, liquid, air, or, or solid. And the way that the people with these powers have sort of organized themselves are into houses. Or at least the power structure is that they've arranged themselves into houses that are clan-like structures with the money and the power and the backing that patronize all of the Monday or the normal born forgers and then they have a council of sorts of all of the families from all of the regions who govern the forging community and we're introduced to our main character whose name is Severin who is part of a family that was declared um, deceased and he's trying to reclaim his birthright. So he's gone on a mission in the first 50 pages. He's gone on a mission to an to a forged um, artifact auction, stolen a compass that contains a map. And so they're trying to decipher the map and the map is supposed to lead to something that will bring down the council and allow him to reinstate his house. Very, very interesting. I like all of my characters so far. I definitely like, um, there's a character called Sophia, or Zofia, who is a Jewish forger who specializes in metals. And she tends to make things explode, and she is by far my favorite character so far. I like all of the characters in general. I haven't found one to dislike yet, but she is definitely my favorite. Um, so I really like this one. I like the magic system and I'm really interested to see how the heist national treasure-esque um, treasure hunt goes. Alright, next, Spectacle. This was one that I got from one of my local bookshops because it looked really, really interesting. Um, the general idea in the first 50 pages is we're following, and I'm really bad with names, Nathal. Natalie? Nathalie? Natalie. We'll just call her Natalie, who is a 16-year-old who is doing a summer job, sort of, 
for the one of the local papers in Paris covering the morgue. And so she goes through the morgue near Notre Dame every day to look at the deceased or the corpses that are put on display for the public and write about them. And during one of these visits, she accidentally connects with a corpse and figures out or and sees visions of the girl being murdered. And so she thinks it's really strange and she doesn't think any of anything really of it and she goes about her day. And at the end of the 50 pages, a second girl shows up. So it's definitely a ser serial killer kind of thing. It definitely gives me strong vibes of Jack the Ripper. And this does take place before 1888, I believe. Yes, it's 1887. And for those of you who don't know your Jack the Ripper history, um, there are some theories that Jack the Ripper actually was in, operating in France before he moved to Whitechapel. There are some victims in France mostly in the Normandy regions that fit the pattern of the Jack the Ripper murders. Um, so they're setting this up to be a kind of Jack the Ripper supernatural murder mystery thing, and I'm really digging it so far. All right, the last one is Ink and Bone by Rachel Kane. Um, this, I know this is a first book in a series, I believe, I think, I'm pretty sure. Um... But this one was another one where it was really tough for me to put down at 50 pages. The general idea is that it's an alternate world where the Library of Alexandria basically took over the caretaking of all knowledge throughout the world. So it's actually set like in 2035 or something like that, but the world still feels, it feels very Victorian um, as if progress has been slowed. And the Great Library controls all knowledge. So you have to request things be brought back. It's very expensive for you to have permanent collections of books. Everything is borrowed from the library using these kind of self-writing books. Almost like a tablet, but paper. And there are people who make their money um, smuggling original texts. And our main character, whose name is Jess... His family runs one of these smuggling rings and when he comes of age instead of handing the business to him because his father knows his heart isn't in the business he'd rather read the books than smuggle the books um, he forces his son to take the entrance exam to become um, a custodian of the library and he passes and so he's sent to Alexandria to basically library in school which sounds so, like so much fun um, to become one of the librarians and kind of help the family by learning the inner workings of the library. Um, this one was super interesting. I really like my main character. I really, he also has a twin brother who I'm sure will show up later, either in this book or in another book. Um, and I like the array of characters because the book kind of, or my 50 pages ends with them just arriving at the Library of Alexandria. So you, it's very similar to Harry Potter, where it's like you kind of have the back alley kid um, who's sent away to school, and then he meets all these kids on the train that are really interesting, and he's really excited to have, like, friends. And then we get to the school, and my 50 pages ends. I can't wait to finish this book, as I'm really excited. So that's that one. All right. So next I will do the book that's going on my bookshelves because I'm not, I don't want to read it anytime soon, but I want to keep it in my collection because I want to read it at some point, is Enchante by Gita Trillis. This one I'm actually kind of torn about whether or not I want to keep it or declutter it because I like the general idea of the story because the general idea is we're following, um, I'm really bad with main character names today, Camille who's 17, her parents have died of smallpox, her father, or her older brother is a drunk AWOL soldier, and her sister, her little sister is sick. And she has the ability to manipulate Maggi, to change small items into other items, to change her appearance, and minor things. 
And so she's been using it to survive. And it gets to a point where in order to keep her sister alive, she goes undercover at Versailles to essentially create a better life for her sister. And in the first 50 pages, we don't get that far. We basically get an introduction to Camille, her family, and how her powers work. Sort of-ish. Um, but it's mostly an introduction to the family and the struggle that the family is going through. This is taking place right before the dawn of the French Revolution. And I have the feeling the French Revolution will start to happen somewhere in here. Probably here, knowing you know, how a young adult works. Um, there's also a young balloonist involved who I think is our pri who's going to be our primary love interest. But in general, the first 50 pages, it's 11% of the book, and we don't have a whole lot going on yet. I'm not quite certain what the actual plot is yet, other than what the little blurb on the um, cover told me. And I'm not a big fan of Camille. And I try to give her a break because it's like she's a fictional character. She's set in a time when women don't have a lot of agency, and her brother is less than brilliant um but in general I'm just kind of like eh, but I'm gonna leave it on my shelves I'll try it when I have free time sometime in the future but that one is going to go back on my shelves for now and finally the book I am decluttering is The Hanged Man by P.N. Elrod um this one I had high hopes for um it's murder mystery and alternate history world with magic general idea is that the world is where queen victoria before she became queen um in disguise took some time to go out and learn about her subjects and decided that she was going to make the world better and ended up marrying an englishman instead of alfred and founds um, the Psychic Service, which are people who have the ability, who are like empaths and telepaths and future tellers and whatnot, to assist the crown with, with supernatural occurrences. And in the first 50 pages, basically what happens is our main character, whose name is Alexandrina, or Alex, um, is pulled out of her lodgings in the middle of the night on Baker Street to go to a murder scene or a, a suspicious death that the co that the police are calling a suicide, but they need to be certain. And so they've called her in as an empath to confirm the suicide. And Alex is a very Sherlock Holmesy character. It's like if Sherlock Holmes was an empath. And in the first 50 pages, we get to, the, we get to the, the scene of the crime and we basically spend 30 or 40 pages wandering around the scene of the crime. And that's part of why I'm decluttering it is this is a much shorter book compared to the others. It's around 350 pages or no, just over 300. It's 333 pages. So 50 pages is... Like, is a sixth of the book, which is 18%, 12%, 12.5%. Um, and we've spent the majority of our time wandering around a scene, a crime scene. Not really explaining the character. We've set up kind of what her powers are, kind of how they work. We know something is wrong. But there's no additional action. As we we get there, we spend a lot of pages with her trying to figure out what's going on. And then her wandering around the building, kind of pointing things out to the cops. And now we were, and right at the end of the 50 pages, we were waiting for um, one of her colleagues to show up to do another reading. So, um, for a mystery novel, not my forte. Um... I wish they would have either gone full Sherlock Holmes with it, which I'm sure they do later. It's very, very Sherlock Holmesy. There's even a Watson-like character. 
but this is not a version of Sherlock Holmes that I particularly appreciate and I don't really care for the writing style or the pacing and that is why that is being decluttered. So not as good as I had hoped on my moving my stash because these are the books that are staying on the shelf. That book is going back on and on my fantasy shelf and this guy is being decluttered. Um, before we leave I will throw up a picture of what my TBR shelf looks like now compared to what it looked like. I believe I took the picture in January. I forgot to take a picture before I started this um, but so there is some improvement to the shelf and I'm happy to have kind of made some decisions about moving things off of the shelves and giving myself a more realistic physical TBR shelf. Um, with that, please remember to like and subscribe if you have any thoughts or comments about any of these books. If you think that I shouldn't bother with some of these or I, or I made some wrong decisions on these guys, please don't hesitate. I'd love to talk to y'all about this stuff. Um, but with that, um, I will be recommending some more videos to you now, and I will see you all in another video. Bye!